Good morning, everyone, and welcome to DeKalb First United Methodist Church. Today is the first Sunday after Easter and Holy Humor Sunday. Rumor has it that Pastor John has been preparing for this all year. My name is Jill Klecka, and this is my favorite joke. Of course, it's the only one I can remember. Um, what, <clears throat> what is a frog's favorite drink? Coca-Cola. At First United Methodist Church, we're all about loving, connecting, and serving. One of the ways we can do this, especially if you're um, a first-time guest, is to join our texting message system. Simply text the word WELCOME to 815-605-6688, and you'll receive updates after once a week. Oh, not me, I'm sorry. You'll receive updates about once a week on the life of the church. We have an amazing worship team this morning. Gina Wisdom will be acting as liturgist. Um, Pastor Jonathan will lead us through the service and share his inspire mes inspiring message. And most importantly, you'll be joining us from home. Speaking of spring flowers, did you hear the one about the flower who went on a date with the other flower? It's a budding romance. Please join me for the call to worship Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful things. His right hand has won a mighty victory. His holy arm has shown his saving power. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy. Rejoice out loud. Sing your praises. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Please join us for our hymn of praise, Up From the Grave He Arose. Forbidden fruit leads to many jams. Share in our, call, our opening prayer as we pray all together in unison. Please follow along as we read and pray together. Let us pray. Holy God, as you have taken what we call an absurdity and turned it into reality, as you have coaxed us to spr sing springtime alleluias where once there was a gray dawn, 
as you have called us out of the tombs we inhabit into an undreamed of tomorrow, we praise you for this day. Come, risen Christ, in newness and hope on this Eastertide day. Amen. The gospel lesson today is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and, the, and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with when Jesus, when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the, the mark of the nails on his hands and put my finger in the mark of his nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you have, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that, though, at, at, and that through believing you may have life in his name. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of the scripture. Amen.
member fell asleep um, during Pastor Jonathan's sermon, and Pastor Jonathan said, somebody wake him up. And Jayden Hateman said, you put him to sleep, you wake him up. Friends, as we open up our hearts to this joyful message on this Sunday after, second Sunday after Easter, we, we connect with God through prayer. So take a moment to pray with me. Let's pray together. Holy God, again, we thank you that you are a God of joy and mirth and merriment, and we, we celebrate your holy humor today. Speak into our hearts. Fill us with your spirit of joy as we listen to your word proclaimed this day. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Well, of course, it's holy humor, and I haven't been preparing this for all year, like Jill said, but maybe for nine months, anyway, and I, and I have to make up for last year because last year I caught COVID the week after Easter, and so I missed this favorite Sunday of the year for me. I missed holy humor last year, so I have to bring all of last year's jokes and this year's jokes, so plan on at least 30 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. But in any case, speaking of holy humor, Here's, here's a story that you may or may not have heard. A teacher was testing the children in her Sunday school class to see if they understood the concept of getting to heaven. She asked them, now children, if I sold my house and my car, if I had a big garage sale and gave all my money to the church, would that get me into heaven? And all the children all in chorus said, no. Okay, great. Well, if I cleaned the church every single day and I mowed the church yard and I kept everything neat and tidy, would that get me into heaven? Again, all the children were like, no. Now she was smiling. Hey, they're getting it, she thought. Okay, well then, if I was kind to animals and gave candy to all the children and loved my husband and, and did all these loving things for other people, would that get me into heaven? Again, a chorus of the children, no! She was just bursting with pride for them. Well, she continued, then how can I get into heaven? And a five-year-old little boy stood up and shouted out, you have to be dead! (laughs) Yeah, well, something like that anyway. Well, friends, I am so thankful for holy humor. And we find the idea of joy and humor throughout Scripture. In Psalm 118, 24, it reads, This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Or in Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Or Psalm 126, verses 2 and 3, Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. And then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Amen. Yes, God has done great things for you and for me, incredible things for us through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, what we celebrate at Easter. And so on this second Sunday of Easter, we turn that Easter joy into holy humor, celebrating resurrection with joy and laughter and maybe a few groans and moans along the way. Again, we celebrate with mirth and merriment, but as an act of worship. Our laughter is a, a, an act of worship to God. You see, it's the worship of a God who smiles upon us as a loving father who laughs with us with a merry laugh, who desires for us to know everlasting, indescribable joy. God is all about joy. Unfortunately, sometimes church people and worship services get a bad rap. We're known for being so somber, so serious. And so what I hope you will be reminded of today is that humor is truly a gift from God, a gift from God. I mean, someone correctly pointed this out. They said, humor is not the opposite of seriousness. No, humor is the opposite of despair. Humor is the opposite of despair. Humor is really another means of grace. It's a way of receiving God's grace, just like prayer or praise or reading scripture are all means of grace, of connecting with God. Humor is a way that we receive God's grace as well. Again, Proverbs reminds us in several places of the joy of laughter and the, 
and, and so on. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart does like good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. Again, science actually shows that laughter can be the best medicine that can actually bring healing to the physical body. Proverbs 15.30 says, A cheerful look brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the bones. So friends, as we open up ourselves to God's word for us today, my prayer is that you might, your soul might be filled with joy and laughter and healing, all because Christ is risen. Christ is risen. The good news, the gospel message so in, again, in that spirit of joy and laughter, here's another story about a subject I know well, church life. The story is told that at the end of a worship service, a little boy pulled on his pastor's hand to get his attention, and then the little boy said, Pastor, I'm going to give you a bunch of money when I grow up. And the preacher says, Wow, wow, thank you very much, but, but why do you want to give me a bunch of money when you grow up? The little boy replies, because my dad says you're the poorest preacher we've ever had. Ooh, I hope he wasn't talking about me. But the Bible, friends, is full of so many different examples of God's holy humor. God has a sense of humor. All you have to do is read the scriptures and read it carefully, and you'll see over and over many examples of that. But for today's purposes, I want to point out that Holy Week and res the resurrection of Jesus is not a tragedy, but a comedy. When we think about literature, this is a comedy. When love wins, it's all about God's love conquering death, having the last laugh over evil. You might say it was God's holy surprise. The, ta-da, look what I can do. I can even conquer death. So some have imagined it this way. One might imagine Satan chuckling with glee when Jesus is whipped and beaten and hung on a cross. And you can imagine Satan jumping up and down celebrating when Jesus dies and is sealed in that cold stone tomb. And just when everyone thought that evil and death had triumphed, that Satan had won, Suddenly, on Sunday morning, surprise! And Satan looks and says, no, 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 it can't be. I, he can't be alive again. I watched him die. And God says, I win. I win. Love wins. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, Easter resurrection is God's holy humor, God's surprising victory, and our glorious hope. What a joy to know that that same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you and I. What a truly glorious, wonderful day. Well, I think I also want to point out that when we think about humor in the Scriptures, that in our Gospel lesson today, we see God's humor at work in that as well. Because think about the situation. The, the disciples, on, on that first day of the week, they're in the, gathered together in the upper room, and Thomas is absent for some reason, and Jesus appears to them, and they see the Lord, and they are so excited. And so Thomas, being the kind of person that maybe you are like, he's sort of the, I got to see it to believe it type of person. And he's given this unfair nickname of Doubting Thomas, He's never actually called that in the scripture, in the story, but he's given it that name by readers like us simply because he insisted on evidence to support the accounts that he was being told by the other disciples. So again, when the disciples come to him or when he comes back to the room after that appearance of Jesus and the disciples are all excited and they're like, we've seen the Lord, he's alive. I can imagine his skepticism. He's like, yeah, right. Give me a break. I knew you guys think I'm so gullible. Nice try, but unless, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were, and, and unless I put my hand into his side, I won't believe it. 
Now, lest you and I judge Thomas too quickly, our tendency is to be the same way, especially in our modern age. We've been taught to be skeptical of miracles. We've been taught to test the validity of theories with scientific methods that can be repeated and proven. And we've been taught to question eyewitness accounts, especially of unlikely happenings. And so that's the situation. Thomas is skeptical. But then that second week, that second Sunday, when Jesus appears, he confronts Thomas and he confronts you and I as the reader with the most unlikely of all miracles, overcoming death itself. And so in a way, you could say the joke is on us. Our demand for proof, our skepticism, our doubts are laughable in God's economy because God's love will always win out regardless of what stands in the way. Again, when we think of this story of Jesus confronting Thomas, I often, when I, especially when I was younger, pictured it as sort of a, a, a real confrontation where Jesus has this scolding kind of shame on you, Thomas, for doubting kind of tone. But as I've listened and as I've thought about this story more, I, I have a new thought about how we should imagine the tone of this story. We don't know either way, but, but I think when Jesus appeared to the disciples, when Thomas was present, I think Jesus, rather than scowling, had a big smile on his face. And he, and he said, surprise, Thomas. It's really me. I'm really here. I'm alive. Go ahead. Come here. Go ahead. Touch, touch the holes in my hand. Go ahead. Put your hand in my side. Thomas, stop doubting and believe. That's the kind of tone I think Jesus had. Because I think we need to see Jesus not as a serious, scolding, angry son of God, but we see him as the joy of life, the joy of life, the ultimate practical joker, the life of the party. Now Thomas, confronted with the reality of Jesus being present with him, his response was appropriate. His response was to to be in awe and to say, my Lord and my God. He responded in worship, my Lord and my God. And I believe that's what our response should be to God's holy humor, to God's joy, that we should be filled with awe like Thomas, but also filled with joy and gratitude, grateful for the opportunity that then we have to not only experience the good news ourselves, but to share that joy with the world around us, with others. Because again, all we have to do is turn on the news or turn on the internet or or look at our neighbors' faces and we see how serious and how sad the world is. We live in a world that's joy-impaired, surrounded by chronic seriousness. And as we know, the world likes to focus on the negative. Now, The famous preacher Chuck Swindoll said this, and I agree with him. He said, I know of no greater need today than the need for joy. Unexplainable, contagious joy. Outrageous joy. See, as Christians, our perspective should be positively joyful. We are Easter people. And because of Easter, we have the knowledge, the faith, the hope, and the relationship with the Lord that can turn sadness into gladness. That's our prayer for us as individuals in our families and that we then can share that joy with the world around us. Because ultimately, that's what Easter is all about, to know Him, the living source, the source of all joy, the very person, Jesus Christ, who radiates joy to all who know Him. So, My prayer for you and for me is that we may know and be filled again and again to an overflowing with the joy that brings laughter and merriment to First United Methodist Church of DeKalb so that we as a people, as a congregation, can become known as the church of holy humor, the church with the most joyful people in DeKalb. How would you like to be known 
as the church of holy humor, the church of great joy, where people walk in and they, they are just overwhelmed by the joy that we exude. May that be true in your life today and throughout this week. Be a joyful people as we celebrate God's holy humor. Amen and amen. As we turn now to the time that we set aside to connect with the God who loves us, the God full of joy and hope and resurrection, we come together to pray. And thinking about prayer, I shared a joke this week in our weekly update that I thought might be appropriate at this time. A woman invited some people to dinner, and at the table she turned to her six-year-old daughter and said, would you like to say the blessing? And the little girl said, I wouldn't know what to say. Well, just say what mommy, you hear mommy say, the mother said. And so the girl bowed her head and she said, Dear Lord, why on earth did I invite all these people to dinner? Amen. <laughs> yeah, so be careful what you ask children to do, right? But we're going to go to God together in prayer. As we come together, we have many joys and celebrations to lift up, and we give thanks for all the blessings of life. We also know that in our community, in our church, and around the world, there's a great need for ongoing prayer, and, and we want to intercede on the behalf of others. And so I bring to you the names again, as we shared last week, Sharon Bakes Wilkins as she recovers from surgery, Cynthia Terwilliger recovering from double knee replacement surgery, and she's at Mary and Joy in Wheaton and would love to receive a call or a visit. And wanted to let you know that we want to continue to pray for the Thompson family. Marilyn Thompson passed away a couple weeks ago, and there is a, a funeral service set now for May 3rd, Wednesday at noon here at the church. And so if, you're a, if you remember Marilyn, you're welcome to come and join us to celebrate her life on May 3rd at noon. As we think about the wider nation, we want to lift up those in Florida who are dealing with really... Uh, um, overwhelming flooding uh, the last few days and of course the ongoing gun violence that our nation faces most recently in Louisville at a, at a workplace and at a bank and so again we pray for our the people and our leaders that we would come up with common sense ways to deal with this kind of violence but we know that there are many things on your hearts and your minds and so I want to give you time to connect with the God who loves you uh, to take a moment of silent prayer. So take a moment to pray, then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. So let's connect with God who loves us right now. Let's pray. And as we come back together to pray together, we thank you, Lord, again for the joy of resurrection, for the fact that even in the midst of the, the violence and the difficulties and the conflicts of this life, for the, the sorrows and the pains of this life, we come to you on this second Sunday of Easter praising you for hope and life and resurrection power. And we pray that you would pour that into each person who's participating in our worship today, that they would know that you are with them no matter what, that you love them no matter what, and that you are seeking to bring wholeness and true peace or shalom into each of our lives. So, so fill each one of us who are part of this uh, worship service today. And Lord, as we lift all these things up to you, we remember now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we now together say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. So again, as we give thanks and as we are joyful celebrating resurrection power, we want to continue to be God's people out in the world sharing the good news of hope and life and joy with our community. We want to be the most joyful community, as we said in the sermon, the most joyful church in DeKalb. And so we want to carry that out. One of the ways we do that in a powerful way each summer to carry joy and blessing to the community is through our summer lunch at the park program. And so as we think about all the different missions and ministries, I just wanted to highlight that one today as we prepare for the summer. Uh, coming up on May, I believe it's May 4th, is the um, Give DeKalb. And so we have an opportunity again to uh, 
give and, and support our summer lunch at the park this year. So keep that in mind as we approach that giving day. Uh, but again, we thank you for, for all the gifts that you give to the church. If you'd like to make a gift for a mission and ministry, go to our webpage at firstumc.net. Scroll down to the red e-giving button, click on that, and you can give to summer lunch. You can give to a whole bunch of other programs or our regular budget items. And either whatever you choose to give to, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. What a joy to serve with you and to, to accomplish mission and ministry together. So thank you very much, and God bless you. What's the best vitamin for a Christian? B1. know what a pickle will say to another when they don't get their way? Deal with it. Friends, on this second Sunday of Easter, as we share together, as we prepare to go forth together, we continue to go forth and celebrate with mirth and merriment and laughter the joy of the Lord, resurrection power. So take that joy with you and allow it to flow out to the people around you today and throughout this week as we celebrate that he is risen he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, before you take off, here's a few ways that you can put your faith into action in addition to sharing that joy. We want to invite you to join us tomorrow night, Monday, uh, April 17th at 6.30 p.m. here in our church dining room for a border, a border mission report. Again, you may recall that several weeks ago I made a trip along with some folks from Community UMC in Naperville down to Nogales, Arizona and Nogales, Mexico to see what the situation was on our southern border, at least at that location. And so uh, I want to share that with pictures and with stories. And so I invite you to join with me uh, tomorrow night, 6.30, here at the church in the dining room. We also have been asking you to mark your calendars and join us on Sunday, May 7th for what we're calling a homecoming celebration where we're inviting anybody who's had a part in the church through the years, whether baptized here or confirmed here or married here or celebrated uh, somebody's life here, anybody in the community is welcome to come and join us as we just remember and celebrate this sacred space that served us so well since 1908 before we begin packing up and begin our move over to our new facility on North Annie Glidden Road. So Sunday, May 7th, we'll begin with a special worship service, and then we'll have fellowship hour with extra special snacks and an, a silent auction with memorabilia that people can, can uh, bid on and take home as, as a way to remember this sacred space, as well as an open house where people can wander around and see the church and, and share memories and things together. So join us Sunday, May 7th. And if you know people who would like to be here, please, please share this news with them to join us on Sunday, May 7th for that special occasion. And then again, uh, finally, I want to turn it over to Nancy Melms and our 
our Christian Ed Department, they've got an announcement about VBS. Take a look. Ah, springtime. All the beautiful flowers are starting to bloom. The trees are starting to bud, which brings us hope. And it reminds us of the season. Well, yes, yes, it's Easter. We all know that. But the other season I was talking about is Vacation Bible School registration season. Most kids want to know, what's the theme for the year? Maybe VBS is about spies this year. Oh, a spy! Nope, not about spies. Oh. Is VBS about Roman soldiers? Yeah. No, no it's not. Is VBS about a band this year? Ooh, there's a band. Nope, it's not about a band. Is VBS about space and stellar? Yes, yes Yay. it is. Yay. <laughs> Join us for Stellar VBS July 10th through the 14th, where we're going to learn how to shine Jesus' light. Registration forms can be found on our website at firstumc.net. Casmo says see you July 10th through the 14th for Stellar Vacation Bible School. Thank you again, Nancy, for her wonderful video work, and we're excited about VBS coming up in July, so if you know kids that would like to participate, please get them registered. But thank you again so much for worshiping with us today. We invite you again every Sunday to come back and join us, if possible, in person as we worship and celebrate and experience God's power and presence together. Join us next Sunday, uh, April 23rd at 9 a.m., but in the meantime, God be with you and be joyful. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Amen.